Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Colleen Myers. I am a social studies teacher <clears throat> at Spotswood High School. Uh, this is my 27th year of teaching here, and I absolutely love what I do and absolutely love our school community. So I'd like to uh, pop up a slide share just to give you a little taste of what your students um, learned about on the first day of school in regard to their needs uh, for class, uh, the type of courses that I teach and the like. So I'm just gonna share this with you please and we'll pop up my normal first day of school slides here. Uh, please do not mind my headset. It's the best way that I find to record things and to give you information. Um, and it also allows me to hear my students better. So here is my starting slide. This is um, giving them information as to who I am. Uh, my email address is cmyers at spsd.us. Uh, sometimes a separate email pops up with my full name attached to my last. That, uh, I'm not quite so sure where that information goes. Uh, but please, if you need to contact me, the best way is cmyers at spsd. Dot us. My second slide that's going to pop up here gives you my class schedule. Uh, I teach three different subjects during the course of the day. I start off with world history and I have two other classes, um, just a period delay later, uh, with a co-teacher named Mrs. Van Doren. World history classes take us from approximately the year 1500 to as close to modern day as possible. Uh, we are currently starting the Renaissance, or we have started the Renaissance, where they have been given general information. They have guided notes uh, for this class. Uh, we do a PowerPoint presentation every day. I am a very visual learner. I know a lot of students are. I don't like 50 million words on my PowerPoint. Um, I usually like pictures. This is very atypical for me, what you're seeing right now. But um, our kids seem to have been following along quite well. And tomorrow, on Friday, they are going to be taking their first student growth objective. Uh, what that is, is an, an essay that they are going to be writing based on what they have learned in class so far and comparing it to evidence that they're going to be given. We call this a document-based question. Uh, the evidence can be pictures, it can be political cartoons, it can be uh, maps, it can be short little uh, verses like a, you know a piece of a Shakespeare play um, but they'll be they're kind of well prepared for it we went over how you go about approaching writing a DBQ today uh, that was our entire class period so the focus was on giving them or setting them up our students for the best possible scenario when they write this essay tomorrow okay AP psychology is something I teach period two and then much later in the day a period 10 this is a college level course only juniors and seniors take AP psychology and <clears throat> that's because some of the topics are very college age oriented uh, when I teach general psych and general sociology, which is a semester one and semester two course, as you see here, um, it is a little different. It is giving them a taste of what these subject areas are. Now for semester one and semester two, psychology and sociology, any student of any grade level in the high school is allowed to try to take that course. Uh, preferential treatment is given to juniors and seniors during scheduling though. Uh, that, that would be normal because again, you're typically not going to be introduced to psychology or sociology until you get to that next level. So I have, you know, a very skewed population in those classes where I have very few freshmen and I have more juniors and seniors that are taking that course. So as you can see, it's a pretty packed schedule. Um, my prep period where I check emails is period five, six. Uh, this is lunch period right now that I am filming this. Uh, so I just wanted to give you the heads up in regard to, you know, when I'm available to be able to check things out, uh, check out my emails and correspond with you when needed. So we'll flip it again and go on to the next slide. This is what do I need on the daily? Now, things are a little different, obviously, with virtual learning here. So uh, what do we need on the daily? Well, typically in the AP Psych class, a large three-ring binder that they would bring to class daily, 
pen, pencil, highlighter uh, included in the binder would be things that I would have handed out to them, uh, including PowerPoint graphs, notebook paper, they would have supplied themselves. They always would get a study guide for the chapter. Uh, I would prefer that they have the syllabus or the timing of the chapter with them. Uh, questions from the prior evening reading, we expect in the AP courses that our students pre-read. And of course, homework if due. Uh, they have a PDF textbook right now for them. Uh, I do not have a hard copy of that textbook. It is a PDF and they have had that available to them since the summer. If your child is in psychology, sociology, world history, typically again, uh, they would have a notebook and a folder. Right now for world history, they have guided notes. For psychology and sociology, my students have been taking notes in the way that they prefer. Um, and that means that some of them have a notebook, some of them I see typing right now. A pen, pencil, highlighter is important, and again, homework if due. Uh, for world history, they had one homework assignment so far. They didn't get one this week again because of the DBQ. For psychology and sociology, they've had two homeworks. And today they did a little assessment of their understanding of the first chapter. Not a typical test, uh, but one that just employed information that they know. Um, and also, you know, filling out some free response questions. Uh, I, made a note that text would stay in the locker unless instructed to bring to class but um, even my understanding is if we go back to hybrid learning the lockers will not be of use uh, so i do have textbooks physical textbooks for world history and psychology in my classroom that they may utilize now if a student did request a textbook because i have pdfs of both the psychology and world history textbooks Okay, if they requested one, I was able to fulfill that request uh, before the pickup. So if your child did not have a world history textbook in their packet, they did not request it, they felt it was fine, just having the chapter by chapter uploads that I do for the world history curricula. Moving on. Computers are so slow. This is my class expectations. I don't like to say rules. I like to say expectations. And my number one thing is respecting ourselves and respecting each other. Our students have been doing such a great job with that um, during the course of this virtual learning. Um, we utilize the chat feature on Zoom often. I ask them to contribute that way. Sometimes I say, just feel free, give me a shout out, you know unmute yourself let's talk a little bit but nobody wants to talk over anybody else so i think they're a little bit more shy with that and they really like using the chat feature and all of the chats have been just specifically around you know some of our banter in class and some of the things that we learn about uh, we try our best the expectation is just give it your all every single time i try to give it my all every time i am in school um, and i am teaching your kids so i ask them to try their best and that's exactly what i told my world history kids about the dbq tomorrow uh, we're a team we're in this together so i like to cultivate an environment where everybody can learn and again that has been somewhat nice uh, so far with uh, virtual learning. Again, nobody wants to jump in um, and um, be a nuisance so far in any class, which is great. And I don't expect it to change when we do get back to a total classroom setting together. Um, we will make mistakes and we will celebrate each other's successes. Usually I give them like a shout out, a personal one. It always makes you feel really good. Uh, one of the things that we learned from virtual learning is that sometimes um, your own work wasn't always being submitted all the time. Uh, so we have improved our, our academic policies about this virtual learning environment and submitting your own work. Google Classroom actually has a feature in which it can randomly check uh, plagiarism. Just so you know, I usually enable that on any type of homework assignment. Uh, I would like everybody to contribute in a way that they are comfortable in class and to definitely ask for help when needed. Uh, typically, I would have specific days in which students could come to me before homeroom and we could literally sit down and have help. Um, I am usually available in the mornings quite early. So I get there 
pretty much when buses normally would happen. Now, in this time period, I have been logging on about 15 minutes before my first period class, um, but we have office hours now, so students can ask me for help uh, during this virtual period. Uh, on task, when the bell rings, that means if there's a do now on the board, get started or have your workout, uh, have your um, assignments if they are due that day, ready, and also be responsible for one's own actions while they are in the classroom. So with that, uh, this is typically what I would have had if we were in school. I would have specific days for help sessions and always on test days. Um, the only thing I would ask students is to please let me know the day before that you will be attending in case I have several students coming in. And that way I can, you know, um, help out as best as I can for every single student that wants to come in and check things out, um, just to check out maybe some homework help or whatever it may be. So I do have those set days associated with the normal school realm, but again, we're not in anything normal right now. So at that point, I'm just gonna stop sharing right at this moment. It is now time for me to go to my next class. So thank you all very, very much. And if you have any questions, please email Colleen Myers. Thank you.